In the days of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abihad. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as a priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside, at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not fear, do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and may will Rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. John will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn their hearts towards their children, and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today the Church celebrates the Feast of the Birth of St. John the Baptist, the relative of the Lord, a more or less distant cousin of our Lord Jesus Christ. But above all, the one who already jumped for joy in the womb of his mother, St. Elizabeth, when the Blessed Virgin came from the northern village of hers, Nazareth, to the center of Karen, where Zachariah lived, and where St. Elizabeth lived, and came to be with her cousin and help her. The Virgin was already pregnant, and the child, St. John, in her womb lives for joy. First teaching, there is life from the moment of conception, there is distant human life, some in their immense clumsiness, and I do not know, if also immense evil. Say that ignorance is very blunt, and it is easily victim for the devil, some clumsily, and perhaps also evil. They say, Jesus Christ never spoke of abortion, it is true, Jesus Christ never said that abortion was a crime and that it will not be committed. He, didn't, he did speak of divorce and they did not pay attention to him. It is true, he did not speak of abortion because at the time abortion in the Jewish world, I mean abortion, was unthinkable. It would surely happen, it will always have happened when a woman cheated on her husband to keep him from finding out, it will always have happened. But knew that it was not only a sin, but even a crime. Jesus Christ did not have to say that it was necessary to breathe before because people breathe. Jesus Christ came to complete or to correct that, to correct what was missing from the teaching on the correctos divinities that, with the passage of time, had been introduced. He did not need to talk about abortion, but there is a human life in their mother's womb. It is. St. Elizabeth is pregnant with John and says, 
The child jumped for joy in my womb. The child. It does not say. This pimple that I have here. Notice that it is already six months old. This pimple has given me a little kick because this is part of my body. No. The child. Those people who had no knowledge of biology, who did not know because they had had no an ultrasound and had seen the picture of the baby in the mother's womb. Those people 2,000 years ago already knew perfectly well that what was in their wombs was not the mother and was not the mother's property. The creature refers to St. John, leap for joy in my womb and tells the Virgin an information revealed by the Holy Spirit. How is that that she comes to me, the mother of my Lord? That is, he is telling her that what the Virgin is carrying in her womb is another person whom he call, whom she calls my Lord. He recognized the divinity of the creature that the Virgin is carrying in her womb, who is almost certainly only a few weeks old. Well, he says, how is the that the mother of my Lord comes to me? It is not like you come to me, so fat, so fat. You have to see what you are getting, because surely the Virgin's pregnancy at the moment was not noticeable at all. The mother of my Lord... But both John and the Baptist and the womb of St. Elizabeth and our Lord Jesus Christ and the womb of Mary were already different persons. And those people 2,000 years ago knew it. They did not need any demonstration or scientific proof. Today science says the same. But they know it and they knew it already then. So they and also in a special way, Mary, who risked her life for the pregnancy, they knew that they were different persons from their own body, and they had to respect them. Naturally, they would, have, they would not have wanted it to do anything else but live for them. St. John, St. Elizabeth, for our Lord, the Blessed Virgin, first teaching of the conception of the future forerunner of Jesus in the womb of St. Elizabeth. Second teaching, the task of St. John, prepare the weight of the Lord. It requires preaching in the desert, that is, accepting that success is not going to come. It requires, therefore, a great love for the one for whom we are preparing the weight, and it requires great humility. When can we imitate St. John preaching in the desert? Well, when people around us do not pay attention to us, or they make fun of us, or when we are minority or seem to, to you that your, your teachings are following on deaf ears, and that all the work you have done all your life to try to bring your children, your husband, your wife closer to God, it's not working. They have lived a life far from faith, far from morality, and far from everything. Well, and you feel that you are preaching in the desert. What is the right thing to do when you preach in the desert? Well, keep preaching. Keep preaching because we have not been called by the Lord to succeed. We have been called by the Lord to work which is not the same thing. Success is his business. Work is my responsibility. With the grace of God, my duty is to work. The fruits will come from the Lord. If I am not in a parish, I think, for example, our parish in Madrid, to give an example, and the parish is full, as it is usually happens. If I am in a parish, even in the daily day, and there are many people at Mass, as it usually happens, for me it is very re rewarding. For the priest who celebrates, it is very rewarding. If I understand in the confessional, and there is a line of people confessing, 
it is rewarding. But if I am in a parish, as it happens in some of our parishes, in a country that I am not going to say, so as not to offend anyone, but as it happens in one of the Latin America countries where we are, where one or two people to go to Mass every day, where on a Sunday when there are 30 or 40 people, it is an ex exception because it is very secularized country. Well, I have this impression. I have been there too, and I have celebrated there. That preaching in the desert is much more pleasant much more rewarding if you have an, an assembly full of people who love you, who follow you. Much more pleasant, you stand in the confessional, there is a line of people. It is much more pleasant and rewarding for the priest than if you have two people at Mass. You stand in the confessional and there is nobody. But where does the Lord need his friends? Where does the Lord need his soldiers? In the desert. Also naturally in the church where many people go. Of course he does, but it is the desert. It is the frontier places. It is the difficult places. It is the places where there is risk. That is what St. John the Baptist did. He went to preach in the desert and the people came to him. Maybe they were other times. The people came to him because he was honest, consistent, because his life was an example and they came to him from all over Israel so that he will baptize them with the baptism of penance. We have to preach even in the desert, in the desert of our family, in the desert of our work, sometimes in the desert which seems to be our church. We have to preach because that is where the Lord needs us, and then He will keep His fruits. Now maybe you spend a long time without seeing great results, then something changes, and those results are produced. How many years was St. John the Baptist unknown in the desert until he began to, to be known, and they began to come to him from one part and another of Israel? Surely many years. There were many years when he was not famous and when he did not give up. He continued doing what the Lord was asking of him, preaching in the desert. Let us learn from St. John his this fidelity to the will of God and the humility to know that we are not the Messiahs, but that the Messiah is Christ and that the only thing we do is the best way we know how to prepare the weight for the Lord. Amen.